Hey. Okay. Hey. <clears throat> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Benjamin Dixon Show podcast version thereof. Uh, thanks for your patience. The state of Georgia, and particularly the city of Alabama, uh, city of Atlanta, rather, uh, is not really built to handle uh, three or four inches of snow. Um, worse than the snow, I guess, is the ice. They don't have salt trucks that go all over the, uh, the, the metro area and the surrounding areas. And so we've been shut down. Uh, everything's been shut down. Schools, government up buildings, um, high, some, certain roads uh, have been shut down. So uh, I have been a hermit for the last uh, 48 hours and hoped that I could get out and go um, to the studio and do work today. Uh, but that's not the case. Everything is shut down. So I I decided to go ahead and do a podcast version from home so that we can keep the momentum going. And just so I can update you all, as always, I'd like to thank our patrons without whom this is not possible. So many things that have happened in the news since we last spoke. Ah, had to pop my stern. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> too much information. That was I don't know if you could hear it. But anyway, um, so much has happened since the last time we spoke that um, I didn't want to let today go by. And not um, jump into the news. So a lot of Donald Trump stuff today. Um, and it's interesting for several reasons. I want to talk about Donald Trump's war on Haiti. Uh, he's made another move to ban Haitians from applying for a certain type of visa, work visa that would allow them, ag agriculture visa and non-agriculture visas that would allow them to come to the United States. So he has this war uh, temporarily come to the United States and work. Uh, recently, he got rid of the TPS, Temporary Protective Status for Haitians. Uh, and of course, we all know last week he referred to Haiti as well as El Salvador and African nations as um, shitholes. So he has this war that's going on against uh, Haiti that is detrimental to the United States of America uh, so I want to dig into that a little bit more uh, as some of the reasons for that as well as John Trump's move on chip or at least his tweets on chip children's health insurance program this morning uh, that program is very um, very important to me because of what it stands for and how and who it helps and then who it hurts it's going to hurt so Many families, um, some of you listening to me now, uh, you're affected by this because perhaps you aren't in an income bracket where or you don't you don't even have to be in an income bracket. Right. It, you could be at a job that does not provide you insurance and chip is there for you to fall back on uh, if you're, you know, don't make too much money. Um, but anyway, they're using it as a bargaining chip. They're using it as a as a negotiation tool. And they're, you know, holding children, nine million children across the country hostage. Donald Trump made some tweets about it this morning that is causing a lot of confusion inside of the Republican Party. Uh, but it also demonstrates uh, how ignorant he is to the job and to some of the simplest parts, facets of the job. Uh, and then last but not least, it's, it's a it's a three for it's a three for one special this morning on Donald Trump, Donald Trump and the porn star Stormy Daniels. Um, I want to talk about not the salaciousness of it whatsoever, but at what point should we care? Um, and at what point should it, should we mind our own business? Um, so of course, with all three of these things, uh, I'd like to think that we bring a nuanced approach to, otherwise I don't think any of you would be here if we were just covering it like, um, f you know, MSNBC would cover it or, you know, just, just some, but anyway, enough caveats let's jump into it so the first move against haiti i honestly believe was pure hatred pure ignorance bigotry and racism um the move to into temporary protective status as well as his comments and we're referring to it as a shithole now uh, i think it is uh jake tapper who likes to parse the specifics the specific comment that he allegedly said uh saying that he referred to el salvador or and the ha uh, african nations as shitholes um and said that we need to get all the haitians out of america but you know what to 
let's I don't care to parse that it still falls into the same category of extreme bigotry and hatred but more than his words are his actions what he's doing against Haiti um, really shows a deep seated um, hatred towards the people of Haiti and you have to ask yourself the question why 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 you know it's really strange that out of all the nations uh, that we have immigration from all over the world, um, all of the black and brown nations. It seems that Donald Trump has specifically targeted Haiti for hate filled commentary as well as detrimental actions. And today he's made another move that is surely detrimental to Haitians, but also detrimental to the United States. And this is the thing about a lot of the moves that they make on immigration it's not it's not as though these moves are just going to be able to uh, stop immigration and have no ramifications or effects rather on the United States of America. Every move that he makes on immigration uh, subsequently has an effect on America, some to a greater or lesser extent. But usually their immig- immigrants have value to the American economy. And so the moves that he makes ultimately backfire against the American economy. So it's not it's not about doing what's in the best interest of the United States of America, because if you're worried about violence, if you're worried about crime, we have to just take a look at white right wing crime in the United States of America. Gun violence. We you know, there's there's specific categories that we can look at that are surely a threat to the United States well above and beyond what any immigrant has ever done in the United States besides the original immigrants, Christopher Columbus, right? I mean being a bit hyperbolic there, but it's true. So, you know, if if it's about crime, there's plenty of categories of crime that the that the president has looked at and said, I don't care. I do not care that on Monday a a white man shot four uh, sheriff deputies. Three of them were SWAT team members in South Carolina. I don't care. We won't even address it. I don't care that the Department of Justice quietly charged someone with terrorism but didn't let the the rest of the nation know what this guy did on a train uh, looking to kill black people. Uh, you know, the, the, specifically, the, Donald, the Trump administration has let it be known that they do not care about violence from a particular group of people. And this is why uh, he started the the movement in, or, or the the initiative inside of the Department of Homeland Security that sought to publicize all of the crimes committed by immigrants, even if it's one occasion, twice, you know, maybe 10 times in a year, someone of uh, an immigrant commits a crime. They have an entire initiative in the Department of Homeland Security that's designed to publicize those crimes. So it's not about crime, because if you're talking about raw crime, you, then there's plenty that that white conservative men commit with guns in the United States that will never be addressed by the Trump administration. Right. So it's not about crime. So if it's not about crime and it's not about um, the economic, the economics of immigration, because it can't be about that, because in every case, particularly the case we're getting ready to discuss where Trump is now not allowing the administration is, is revoking um, or refusing Haitians from even applying, not just turning them down, but they can't even apply for a particular type of visas, um, agricultural and seasonal work or se- seasonal work visas. You know, this has an economic effect on the United States of America. And he likes to make it seem as though every immigrant that comes to the United States, particularly from black and brown nations, they are coming to take from America, but they never say exactly what these people give to America. They're not here just because they want to be here. They're here because there's work for them here. And they're here because there are companies who want to hire illegal immigrants or seasonal workers or undocumented workers. They're here. They want to hire them because they hire them at lower wages and get higher profits if you really wanted to stop if you really wanted to stop the immigration problem the problem of illegal immigration undocumented workers people who overstay their visas then you would start with the corporations who make billions of dollars off of them every single year but that's not really the purpose of this this has never been the purpose the purpose has never been the fact that they're a drain on our social uh, social systems because for the most part immigrants who come here work and contribute to the economy 
It's not about crime because if it was about crime, they would focus on crime from everywhere. It is about fomenting and, and, and fostering is the word I'm looking for. Fostering this fear and hatred towards black and brown people from foreign nations because they have a fear and hatred of black and brown people in America, American black and brown people. All right. So that's the prelude. So NBC News has a report uh, saying, quote, the Trump administration is moving to prohibit people from Haiti, which president allegedly insulted in a meeting last week from applying for visas uh, for seasonal and farm workers. The Department of Homeland Security, this is again, I'm reading from NBC News, has given notice it plans to prohibit people from Haiti, as well as Belize and Samoa, from applying from H-2A and H-2B visas, which are temporary. Those visas allow businesses to bring workers uh, from other countries. Key sentence. It allows businesses to bring workers from other countries. Maybe because there's a shortage of people in the United States who don't want to work in those areas, possibly. Possibly. That's a good probability, but also because they can pay foreign workers less than they would pay American workers. Bottom line. And and, and look, look, before I finish even reading uh, some of the key components of this, look at that dynamic and look at the arguments that, that, that are made usually by like black nationalists and sometimes by white nationalists. There's an intersection there that I think is hilarious, uh, but they do agree on something. They talk about how foreign workers depress wages and how we should not uh, be in solidarity with brown people because they come over here. And, and, and even you have you even have black uh, right conservatives or black nationalists or black capitalists which is a weird intersection who say that we shouldn't even stand up for Haitians because Haitians come over here and depress our wages well look at the key sentence here from NBC News those visas allow businesses to bring in workers from other countries okay businesses are doing this the people who immigrate here to work for the cheap wages, they're doing it because businesses create the opportunity for them. So it is not the worker who depresses the wages. It is the it is the business. The businesses depress the wages. The, the, I, I can't believe that we even have that I have to put so much emphasis on this because this is a prevalent argument that exists in black communities, particularly black nationalist communities, black hotep communities, as well as white nationalist communities and some, you know, places in between those two extremes. But it's not the workers who come over here who create the problem. It's capitalism that forever seeks the cheapest labor possible. And yet we want to blame the worker. Well, we blame the worker on the on the right wing side of the equation. We blame the worker because it's, it is an, an effective muse. It is an effective scapegoat, the most effective scapegoat to, to keep people from ever looking at the real problem, which is the system, which is capitalism. That is the real problem. Capitalism will always seek the lowest. If capitalism, if a capitalist right now could get away with free labor slavery, they would. Period. OK, let me get back to Haiti. Those visas allow businesses to bring in workers from other countries. The H-2A visa is for agriculture and the H-2B is for non-agricultural seasonal work in places such as resorts. The notice of which countries are eligible, published, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. I want to get to the key part of this, which shows you um, exactly how ignorant this is. Um <clears throat> Um, a particular, uh, I'm trying to see who this, oh, a labor economist. There we go. Clemens, who is a labor economist, uh, said that barring Haitians from the visa will encourage illegal migration to the U.S. and hurt the U.S. economy, not because illegal immigration will occur, but because of the following sentence, quote, Haitian farm workers on the H-2A visa that I have studied in Alabama added $4,000 to the U.S. economy per worker per month. And this is from a labor economist. So four thousand dollars added to the to the United States economy per worker per month from Haiti. So this move is detrimental to the economy of Alabama, but it's also detrimental to the economy of the United States as a whole. 
So it's not a move for economic purposes. It is a move because the right wing understands how bitter that seed is inside of white Americans, uh, particularly poor and impoverished white Americans who think that immigrants are coming to take their jobs. Generally, those are jobs that white Americans, Americans in general, we're not going to work. But even if you were going to work them, it's not that they're coming to take your job. It's that the businesses and the corporations don't want to pay you what you are required to be paid based on federal regulations. They don't even want to pay you a minimum wage. And because they don't want to pay you a minimum wage, of course, they're going to go and get some foreign workers because businesses initiate the majority of this. You think businesses are just sitting around being taken advantage of by an immigrant? They're like, Oh, my goodness. I had no idea that this was an illegal immigrant working for me. Uh, how dare you take advantage? I want to operate this this honorable, nationalistic, uh, patriotic business. No, fool. They want to get the cheapest labor they can, and they know if they hire Jim Bob from Mesquite, Alabama, they're going to have to pay him minimum wage. But if they hire Jose, who's here illegally, they don't even have to pay him uh, 10% of the minimum wage because he's not supposed to be working here anyway. But the scapegoat has always been black and brown immigrants, always. And so the first move of Trump last week, the TPS, um, um, not not the first move last week, but the comment from last week, as well as his first move against Haiti, uh, the temporary protective status, um, revoking that, you know, I, I honestly believe that that was purely hatred of the Haitian people, um, purely um, Steve Bannon type politics, Stephen Miller, who still left politics um, and not... But this next move, which is actually detrimental to the U.S. economy, as well as the TPS move was detrimental to the U.S. economy. I I don't want to belittle that. Um, But this move might be in reaction to the Haitian government um, releasing information that Donald Trump actually helped a former dictator from Baby Doc Duvalier, um, my 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 co-anchor Rebecca is going to kill me for that horrible pronunciation pronunciation but the Haitian government um, released information stating that Donald Trump helped the former Haitian dictator launder money by selling him a uh, a, a unit in Trump Tower now um, Duval, Duvalier uh, baby doc let's just call him baby doc because I can't pronounce Duvalier right maybe I did I don't know um, but he has been out, he's long since ousted. And once he was ousted, he had a large amount of money that he had from the Haitian Department of Treasury or Ministry of Treasury. And he needed to launder that money. And according to uh, BuzzFeed, uh, the Haitian government has released documents that conclude that uh, about 500,000 of those dollars were were used to purchase a unit was used to purchase a unit in Trump Tower during the 80s for about well five hundred thousand dollars cash, and there subsequently there have been um, um, there have been regulations put in place since then um, that require large cash payments to still um, require a certain type of documentation so that they can so the feds can sniff out any type of money laundering but in this case at this time this was not the case Donald Trump was able to sell uh, baby doc a unit for five hundred thousand dollars without any trace of him as an individual but a shell corporation that he purchased it purchased it through now the haitian government just released this information i I believe this week if not over the weekend this week they released this information and so it shows that donald trump actually helped baby doc or at least the trump uh corporation help baby doc launder this money and the haitian government current haitian government released this information almost as a retaliation to donald trump for his shithole comments donald trump now the trump administration is penalizing all haitians even to the detriment of the u.s economy because of this move in my opinion i believe that this is uh specifically or expressly tit for tat 
So, so this is the pettiness of the president, and this is the type of um, uh, insanity that he has been involved in his entire life. But now he gets to play it on a national level, and he gets to express his his uh, he gets to carry out his grudge matches through this nationalistic, uh, bigoted gene that exists in so many right wing white Americans, that is also co-signed by black nationalists and hoteps. Who think that we should not even stand in solidarity with uh, with black people from Haiti because they're taking our jobs and they leave out the critical class analysis that capitalism will always seek the globe, go through the globe like a roaring lion looking who it can devour. If I can use biblical language, it will always uh, uh, scour the globe in order to find the cheapest labor possible. And it will create rules here in the United States that allows for illegal immigration to occur or create the conditions or create um, the, the, or will not allow any system to be put in place to keep corporations from prop profiting off of illegal immigration. If ICE really wanted to be serious about their work they wouldn't go and attack the individual families they would go straight to the head of the problem which are many several corporations rather across the country that profit off of illegal immigrants such as illegal even exists as a thing i'm just using their terminology here right undocumented workers people who overstay their work visas you know, there's so many categories and for every category of a person who is here uh, that is not properly documented, that represents a person who can be profited off of because they are not corporations are not required to corporations, LLCs, whatever, you know, uh, uh, partnerships, you know, every version of that businesses are not required to pay these people minimum wage because these people aren't even supposed to be here. So if ICE really wanted to do this, they have a system. I forgot. It's like a, it's an e-verify system that that checks every worker in your in your um, um, in your company. A very quick, like really quick check. And they can identify what companies have, quote unquote, illegal workers working for them. But they don't do that. No, what they do is they they make sure that they raid, you know, motel six and they you know their their stories horror stories of them raiding hotels or having informants at hotels and you do all these types of things because they want to make this is in their blood I, and i'm shifting gears now i'm thinking about the ice workers who really i mean you, I, i'm thinking more and more and more how easy it was for uh nazis to be uh for germans to to be complicit with the nazi uh party because, I mean, there, there are, there's a certain group of people in every single society that they don't really care about the morality of an issue. They see it as this is my job and I'm doing this job and those people that I'm doing my job to, for, to or against, you know, those people I have to get. It's, it's a very simplistic view of the world that a police officer takes when he becomes a police officer and forgets everything that he has grown up in, through and under. And he becomes a part of the system, whether he's a black person or a brown person or a white person, it doesn't matter. He becomes complicit, part and parcel with this system. And I think of, of these ice workers and you think of how low of a human you have to be. But it just it just historically that has always happened. It has always been the case that you're going to have people who find joy in carrying out their job, even if their job is an immoral job. All right. Sorry. Didn't mean to. But but anyway, you get it. All right. Uh, next story on Trump. I mean, if we got to cover Trump, we might as well cover him thoroughly and get to the core of the issue right the superficial stuff about how how much he weighs actually it didn't really bother me i mean I'm, 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 a, I'm a big dude myself right i'm bigger now than i've ever been in my life like i think i'm you know probably 100 pounds bigger than i was before i got married so it did, but it didn't really bother me that everyone jokes about the girther movement uh i know everybody handle thing handles things differently so i'm not saying that if it did bother you there's anything wrong with it but i just thought you know i saw it and i'm like hmm he's fat <laughs> 
and he's trying to hide it. Gerther is pretty creative, if you ask me. Um, but, you know, whatever. That's not, that's neither here nor there. But um, if we're going to cover him, we may as well cover him substantively uh, and not just the low-hanging fruit of Gertherism. <laughs> I just, I'll be, I make up words on the fly like it's nothing. So Trump sent out some tweets this morning that shows exactly, to say he's ignorant is nothing new, but he doesn't understand his job which is nothing new, but he doesn't understand his job and he's quick to make declarative statements that create problems for his own party. And he does it on a regular basis. Now, while that last part is not new, it's substantive because every time he does something like this, it creates chaos in the Republican Party because they don't know what to do. Because Donald Trump doesn't understand his job, he tweets something that is extremely ignorant and then it throws the Republican Party into chaos because they're like, well, is the president with us or is he against us or is he just so stupid that he doesn't realize that what he's saying is hurting our cause? Now, in the backdrop, of course, it's a, this is just like the Godzilla movie. When you see two monsters fighting, you sit back and you let them fight. But I have to give some uh, sideline commentary about how ignorant the president is to his job as the leader of the Republican Party and his unwillingness to simply Google, never mind request information and talk to his advisors and talk to uh, intelligence officials. I'm, I'm, I'm broadening the conversation here. Never mind he has access to the, to the greatest intelligence in the world. <laughs> this man won't even Google before he tweets. <laughs> the president of the United States. All right. Well, you're wondering, like, Ben, what are you talking about? Well, um, Trump this morning had several things to say. Let me get to the right tweet. Um, he said, quote, Chip on Twitter, he said, Chip sh Children's Health Insurance Program should be part of a long term solution, not a 30 day or short term extension. Um, a government shutdown would be devastating to our military, something blah, blah, blah. The Democrats don't care about. Now, the president uh, in saying this does not realize that um, <clears throat> that Chip, even though it's being attached to um, a short term bi spending bill to keep the government open, because the government shutdown is looming, the provision that's in this uh, this short term spending bill um, is actually a six year extension to chip. Uh, it's the extension, same extension that the Republicans forgot about during the their original attempt back in March to get rid of uh, Obamacare. They were so fixated with destroying Obamacare that they forgot or maybe intentionally uh, allowed the funding for CHIP to expire without renewing it. And so now they're they have been using CHIP kind of as a um, more so recently. You know, originally it was like, OK, we're going to get chip done. We forgot about it. But now they're really using it as a as a tool to try to pigeonhole or to. Yeah, I guess that's the right word. Try to force Democrats into voting for um, funding for the wall. And they're attaching all this to uh, a bill that if it's not signed, the government will shut down, will subsequently shut down. And so here, Donald Trump, do you I mean, I, I don't know if you see it yet. So chip is being used as a bargaining tool by and bargaining is such a loose term. Uh, ch Republicans are holding children hostage is more ac accurate. Actually, even more precise, Republicans are holding the poorest children in America hostage in order to try to get funding for Donald Trump's wall. And the president of the United States tweeted out this morning, hang on, CHIP should be a part of a long term solution, not a 30 day or short term extension. Well, the only reason it's in this bill is because Republicans are trying to put it in this, keep it in this bill to force Democrats to vote for it. So if the president of the United States, who's the leader of the Republican Party, uh, doesn't think that it should be a part of this bill, then that means he's not on board with the strategy that Republicans have been using in order to force Democrats to vote for it. 
which is totally fine with me because I feel like Republicans should not be, or not, I feel like, I know without a shadow of a doubt, Republicans should not be using the poorest children in America to, as a bargaining chip for anything. There should be a clean chip bill, just like there should be a clean DACA bill. So the president, in his ignorance, has inadvertently landed on the right side of the conversation. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Because, you, without, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, the president of the United States doesn't give two dams about children. You, you no one is going to tell me that out of all the bigotry and all the seething hatred that has oozed from his mouth over the last three years that we've had to deal with him through the election and the primaries and the general election and his first year in office. You mean to tell me that he has a soft spot in his heart for children and he's cognizant enough about the problem that he tweeted out that we should make this a long term uh, so, because that's not even what he said. Right. He didn't even he didn't even address the actual problem. The actual problem isn't that it's going to be a short term fix. It's a six year fix attached to a short term spending budget. The actual problem in this whole conversation is that the president of the United States of America is so clueless to his job as the president, his job as the leader of the Republican Party that he and he's so intellectually uncurious. He's just not curious enough to Google. Never mind he has access to all the greatest advisors. Well, he should have access to all the greatest advisors, the smartest minds. And yet he tweets this out. So Republicans are scurrying, trying to figure out what this actually means. What does this tweet mean? What are, I'm sure by the time you listen to this, the president probably would have tweeted out um, a, a, a subsequent tweet to clarify just like he did last week. I forgot the exact topic, but he had to clarify something last week um, with one of the many bills that they're uh, trying to destroy America with. But it just goes to show you, man, that anything goes now. And that's a bad thing, right? At a minimum, you would hope that the base requirement to be president of the United States would be intellectual curiosity not for the sake of being a navel gazer but for the sake of wanting to make sure you're saying the right thing before you say it i think that if there's anything that should be a requirement i don't know how you qualify that but i know how to point out a person who doesn't have any curiosity whatsoever he just will blabber his mouth about anything and <laughs> to boot you've got people who will co-sign anything this madman says people you know so i don't know i'm tired of talking about him I, i'm actually what are we we 30 minutes in talking about trump i don't know, even know if i could do this last story about stormy daniels <laughs> uh <clears throat> because i it's the, it, the level of ignorance is so staggering that i actually just need to break away from talking about him and go read a book um to just kind of re-up you know i gotta recharge <laughs> I'm so serious. You think I'm playing. Maybe even just go in and play some Super Mario Brothers with my son would be more intellectually stimulating than thinking about Trump. Even though I try my best to make it rigorous, it's still we're analyzing stupidity. Can you I mean, how many different ways can we analyze stupidity and come to the same conclusion that we are living in an idiocracy? All right. Last but not least, Stormy Daniels. I'm going to do the story in less than 60, 60 seconds. Stormy Daniels, porn star, says she had sexual relations with the president uh, four months after um, the first lady gave birth to Bannon. Uh, not Bannon, but uh, whatever the boy name is. Uh, and allegedly, Donald Trump's attorneys paid one hundred thirty thousand dollars to keep her silent. Um, that's pretty cheap. Yeah, I mean. If I got to keep quiet about something like that, that I could probably make a $60 million book royalties off of. Yeah, yeah, that that wasn't too. Well, anyway, um, when should we care? Only enough to point out the hypocrisy of conservative evangelicals, family values, people who are never going to say anything about this. And if they do say something about this, it's going to be something along the lines of the president has repented and, you know, or God used people in the Bible who had problems, too. They're going to find a way to justify it. I don't really personally care about um, the infidelity of an individual. I care about assault 
and care about sexual assault in that way. Uh, if there's any any accusations of sexual assault in this story, uh, I don't think I've come across it. Uh, I don't care about the salacious details of him running around chasing after her in his tidy whities You know, that's stuff that's going to be on your headline news. All I really care about is the hypocrisy component um, that shows you even more uh, that evangelicals are completely devoid. At least evangelicals who still stand by Trump are completely bereft of any integrity and any sincerity. They are the utmost uh, the, the, they are the epitome of hypocrisy. And this matters in so much as I believe that we could pick off one evangelical at a time. We could pick them off and show them what they've been believing and what they've been supporting politically. I don't care religiously what they believe, but what they've been doing politically has been a farce. And that their leaders, Franklin Graham, uh, Jerry Falwell Jr., uh, Je- uh, Robert Jeffress, John Hagee, they do not care about anything that they actually preach about. They only care about the political side of it, their, at their uh, accumulation of political power and um, the notoriety that they get from it. Stormy Daniels is only um, significant in terms of the infidelity portion of the story. It's only it's significant in that way. And, you know, I'm a big proponent of people's relationships, whatever consulting adults consent to, that's their business. You know, Melania has a right to do whatever she wants to do, you know, in terms of morality. I'm not a big person of judging people on sexual morality so long as it is consenting adults. But once we bring it into the political sphere, when your entire shtick is based on sexual morality, well, then, hey, we've got something to say. And what I have to say is that evangelicals, if you still stand by Trump, are you even really Christian? I mean, read your Bible for the love of God. Uh, Hopefully this ice will melt and I will be in the studio tomorrow. Have a great day, everyone.